Hey, hey, hey. How are you all doing today? Well, I hope you're doing great by the grace of God. It's been a while, but um, here we are. I always love to take only five minutes of your time, so I'm not going to waste so much time. Today, I want to talk about holiness and forgiveness. Um, why this came to my mind is uh, last week on Friday, I was driving to to get some lunch with a few friends of mine at work and one of them had mentioned to me that his father was a pastor so I, I was playing a, a gospel song in my car it's called the blessing the Lord bless you and keep you so uh, I, w I was supposed to be singing uh, at church that Sunday so uh, that's the song we're gonna do so I I asked him hey do you play a gospel music in your car and he said uh, no man I'm I don't play any gospel music in my car and you know I don't want to play gospel music in my car then I go back and you know I'm doing this I'm doing that so he told me about somebody who was uh, into gospel music and then he had a, a masturbation problem so he said you know if I, I don't want to be playing gospel music then I go out and do something else so and this came to my mind and I thought to share it with you the church is not for holy people Going to church and singing gospel music and praying, that does not mean you are holy. It just means you are a sinner who is trying to look for righteousness. Nobody is holy. The Bible clearly says it here. I wrote it down just so I don't mix it up. The Bible clearly says it in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All. Everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you are holy, it means you have no sin. But if you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, it means you cannot be holy. You are not holy. But also Romans chapter 3 verse 10 says, No one is righteous, not even one. Nobody is righteous. Talk of Abraham, talk of Moses. I'm gonna, in, in a moment, I'm just going to talk about uh, some strong characters in the Bible that, uh, that have influenced us in our day-to-day -day lives as Christians. And I want to talk to you about how they were very, very unholy. Because look at David in the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 22. It refers to David as a man after God's own heart. Can you imagine? And yet David's hand was so blood-stained that when he asked God to build him a temple, God told him, no, you don't have to because your hands are soiled with so much blood. So David's son, King Solomon, had to build for God a temple. But look at how favored David was with God just because he repented but David was not holy David was not righteous so the church is not for holy people the church is the place we go to refuel up you know to fill up our tanks once more I one time preached a, a message called uh, grace and I, I was talking about the church is is like a fuel station it's like a gas station where you go on Sunday to fill up Sunday to fill up your tank so that you're able to drive to work to and fro the whole week and then when you know by the time Sunday comes you're tank of fuel is almost empty so you have to go back to the gas station or to the tank I mean, to the fuel station and refuel that's how the church is every Sunday you go to church because you are trying to fill yourself up with the Word of God fill yourself up with the Word of God so that during the week you know you go spreading goodness spreading love care and kindness and spreading the gospel of Christ as he said going to all the world and preach the gospel so you are, you know, speaking to your friends at the end of the week, you are empty and you say, you go back to church and say, Lord, please fill me. Again, just going to church, the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, let us not forget or neglect to fellowship and encourage one another. This was the Apostle Paul. At least it was believed at a certain time that the Apostle Paul is the one who wrote the book of Hebrews, but right now the author is unknown. But he says that, I mean, do not forget to fellowship and encourage one another. The fellowship we're talking about, I don't think necessarily means going to church, but coming together as Christians, even in fellowships in your own home. So coming together and encouraging one another and believing. So church is not for holy people. Church is for sinners. If you're holy, then the church is not the place where you want to go. Much as in the Old Testament, the church is where God dwells. Right now, the Bible says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That means God dwells in you. That means the Spirit of God is in you. His helper is in you. So you are the church. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you forget to go to church because it says do not forget to fellowship together. Because at least I can know that right now church is where we congregate, but we can congregate in our own homes. So church is not for holy people. Church is for people who are seeking righteousness, who are seeking forgiveness. Look at the Apostle Paul. Before he was the Apostle Paul, he was actually called Saul. And he was a ruthless crusader who was very much... Um, 
determined actually to stop the growth of Christianity. He, he masterminded the, the murder and the killing of so many Christians, but God changed and turned his life around because when God revealed himself to Saul, uh, who later became the Apostle Paul, who was responsible for the growth and the building of so many churches, you know, it, it started to look different unto him when God revealed himself to Paul. So Paul was a sinner and like many of us, but just because God revealed himself to him. Again, I say, look at King David. He was one of the most highly revered and important characters in the Bible. And he triumphed over a lion, a bear, and he a giant as well. Look at him. But this man broke five of the Ten Commandments. I'm sure many of us today, we break all the ten. David broke five. One... Do not commit murder. He murdered so many people. Uh, do not lie. He was the boss of that. Committed adultery. Do not covet your neighbor's wife. Forget even that. He just stole his neighbor's wife. But even if his sins were many, God forgave him. He wasn't righteous. He wasn't holy. But God used him mightily. Look at Moses. He was quiet and humble when he was in Egypt. And he saw one of the masters uh, of um, an Israelite slave. Uh, beating him he went and killed the man then he went away and hid he was a murderer but God still transformed him and sent him back and used him to rescue over two million Israelites who were trapped in Egypt can you imagine unholy people but God is using them mightily in mighty places look at Simon Peter a man who even after Jesus told him you're going to deny me three times he still went ahead and denied Jesus three times but look Simon Peter later on became the rock of the church a sinner Denying that he and Jesus were not friends. That was a sin. Do not lie. He's lying right there. But God still used him mightily. Look at Jonah. God asked him to go and preach the gospel in Nineveh. He instead boarded a ship going to, uh, 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 to Italy across the sea. The other direction of Nineveh. He didn't want to go there. You know? But when God sent a storm to capsize a ship and Jonah was thrown into the ocean, God could have let him drown. Could have let him die. Made a whale swallow him and deliver him to Nineveh and he preached the gospel. And what happened? He was still an unholy man, a man who listened to God. I cannot imagine someone who directly disobeys God. How can you do that? I can't even disobey my boss, but you disobey God directly? That's one serious guy. So Jonah did that. So look at all these people. Sinners. But yet God used them mightily. So the church is not for holy people. The church is where sinners go. If there is any Christian who thinks that going to church means you are holy, that's a lie. You're lying to yourself. The church is where sinners go. It's where we go to seek the face of God. It's where we go to seek to be righteous. But we are not holy because Romans says nobody is holy. Not even one. The same Romans says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It means that we are not holy because we have all sinned. So, I just hope you share this message with anybody out there who, you know, love to listen to the gospel. Let them know. The church is not for holy people. The church is for sinners. If somebody out there thinks I have sinned too much and I cannot go to church because I have committed so much sin, remember, the church is not for holy people. It's where sinners actually go. Thank you so much. Have a good day.